Welcome to Beans and Breakdowns, a podcast dedicated to bridging the gap between specialty coffee and the heavy music community. On this episode, I'm joined by Cody Robertson, guitarist of the Atlanta-based metallic hardcore band Dispose. So grab a fresh cup of coffee and wake the fuck up! What's going on, Caffeinated Crew? I'm here with Cody from the band Dispose, uh, ATL legend of sorts. Not really. We go way back, though. <laughs> so, uh, mind, Cody, mind, <laughs> Cody, Cody, <laughs> welcome to the podcast. Welcome hey, on. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's super nice to see you after, I don't. I think it's been, we were talking, it's been about 10 years or so since yeah, we've, we've seen like each that. other. Probably on the time. dot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, I hope you're doing well. You're looking like you're in a, a sports museum. Right now. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm doing okay. I'm, you know, just surviving work, trying to work just like everyone else and pay the bills and keep going. But yeah, I got a, a little bit of sports memorabilia behind me, but nice. pretty much all limited to Atlanta Braves. <laughs> yes. Hell right. Uh, we will, we will get into some of that, but first let's start with the coffee. What are you drinking right now? Well, I know I talked about um, I was going to go buy some like special coffee for the podcast, but yeah. I'm going to be honest, I was so lazy that I never got around to doing that. So we're going with classic medium roast Folgers. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that is a Beans and Breakdowns first, but uh, there, as as on theme with this podcast, no elitism, so no judgment. Uh, everybody has their own coffee taste. So uh, do you... I do like to talk about tasting notes, so I'm so curious if you can tell me what you can taste in the Folgers. Uh, I honestly don't. I know nothing. It's just coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just caffeine, essentially. It's like uh, the coffee that I always remember my parents brewing growing up, so it like smells familiar and stuff like that. Right. And it's just like, you know, I don't know. It's familiar. It's like, like God, it's just nostalgia in a cup. <laughs> it reminds me of like church coffee when I was a kid. Yeah, and, and it was like they had coffee, so you'd get a little bit because you weren't allowed to have a lot, right. and you just or put like, a bunch of sugar and shit in it. Yeah, or like the coffee your grandpa would get from like the corner gas station when you were. Yeah, my mima, my mima's making yeah. like instant <laughs> Folgers. Um, yeah, exactly. Well, that's great. I love a good bit of uh, nostalgia. So immediately, I'm thinking like just the coffee that I grew up with, which was just 100 <laughs> percent dirt, basically. Yeah. But it's it's a good feeling. Um, I'm drinking something on the complete opposite end of the spectrum. Uh, I have a coffee from Dispatch um, here in Montreal. It's called Casa Geshe. It is an Ethiopian natural processed, uh, super delicious, um, just a lot of nice fruity, like vibrant notes is what they put on the uh, on the website. But Dispatch is really cool because they have a story for every producer that they get their coffee from. So they have like a hundred percent traceability for all of their coffees, which is really important. Um, and, and specialty coffee right now, making sure that everybody in the cycle is getting like a fair wage and, and a proper, you know, payment and, and acknowledgement for their work. So, uh, super into dispatch right now. It's, it's really cool what they're yeah, doing. I need, I need to check it out. More places that I can order from and less that I have to physically go to. <laughs> I'll be yeah, more right? likely to get them from. Yeah. I, I, it's funny because I, I do want to put a list of like guests I've had on, but I have a few friends that are not too far from Atlanta. Like one of my friends is the coffee director of a, um, of a shop in Charlotte that just started roasting, which sure. you could get that coffee tomorrow if you ordered it today probably, but um, uh, they're called Night Swim. Super cool stuff that he's doing. And he was actually, I don't know if you ever saw the band Me and the Trinity. Mm, sounds familiar, but I can't remember if I saw them. Or... I played bass in them when they started, but they were like a Norma Jean kind of ripoff band. Um, and he played drums with me in that band, but now he's a coffee director. Yeah. So I envy every square inch of his <laughs> life right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of great roasters that you can just order from. It'll end up at your door and then you can... Uh, get lost in the rabbit hole of <laughs> specialty coffee. Yeah, that's what I need because ru ruin your life. <laughs> yeah, definitely what I need. And I have a tendency to go down the rabbit hole of anything that I <laughs> first start getting into, as you can tell from behind me. It's like yes. I can't just get one thing, I have to get a bunch of things. 
I think that's the problem with millennials is like we 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 looked at our parents and they just like worked hard and worked hard and you know and never bought anything for themselves. Right. Or they had they wore the same pair of new balances like yeah. every day. Uh and we're like, oh, there's a thing called specialty coffee. I'm just gonna invest <laughs> all of my extra income right. into that. Or like yeah. for you sports memorabilia, I love the Braves. Let's buy everything I can find about the Braves. I mean, that's honestly the way I look at it. It's like, why else do I go to work if my bills are paid? I, you know, I'm healthy and taken care of. My family's healthy and taken care of. Then buy whatever the hell you want. <laughs> whatever makes you happy. Get that serotonin boost. That's right. That's right. Every time I buy a pair of drumsticks, you know, I get a little bit of a, a little bit of like a shiver. Yeah, it's like Christmas morning all over again for like exactly. two seconds. New drum heads. There's nothing like a fresh new drum head out of the box. Yeah. Uh, well, I appreciate you getting into the the coffee nerdality, the, the nerdiverse of coffee uh, this morning. But let's kind of shift into, I know that you are a Braves fan. I grew up rooting for the Braves. I am an, a Houston Astros fan by marriage, though. Don't Ugh. judge me for that. <laughs> uh, but my National League team is still the Braves. Um, they are the reigning champions of the MLB currently. Finally. And you, I can tell, are a huge fan. Um, what is your least favorite MLB franchise? Um, I would have to be the Yankees or the Mets, probably either New York team, probably the Yankees. I feel like they're just the super villains in baseball in general, though. Well, we can unite behind that. <laughs> and the Mets, <laughs> just because like I was just born, like bred to hate the Mets through the 90s, like growing up, it was like, you hate them. <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, though, because they're always like the underdog. They're never, you know, on top. I think it was just because they're like a division rival, I guess, you know, mm -hmm. like. We have to beat them every year. What's fucked up is the Savannah farm team. We had the Sand Nats. <laughs> the Bananas, no? <laughs> well, now it's, yeah, it's like a collegiate scout team. Uh, yeah. It's actually pretty fun to go. But when the Sand Nats were still there and that, that whole system was struggling, they were a Mets farm team. And I was like, why would you put this oh, really? in Georgia? I, yeah, I never yeah. knew that what the, uh, team that, that system fed into, honestly. I knew the Sand Nats were there, but I never like looked into it. So over the years, it was the Braves, and then it transferred to um, the White Sox, hmm. I believe. And then by the time it went to, uh, I think it went to Columbia, um, it was a Mets farm team. Yeah, that's right. I think the Braves moved to Rome because they were their single A. Anyways, mm -hmm. <laughs> I can talk for hours yeah, about I this know. one thing. So. And I'm, uh, I'm not even like super, super well-versed in it, but... Most people I talk to about baseball, they're like, why do you even watch baseball? It's like, because it's fun. Yeah, it is fun. <laughs> it is fun. You can sit and drink a beer. You, there's, it's the only sport where you can have tobacco in your mouth while you're, you're playing. That's yeah. crazy. And back in the day, they, like, there's videos of them like smoking cigarettes and <laughs> drinking beer in the dugout. Like They didn't care. That's a real man sport right there. I don't it care really who is. you are. Um, you can be fat and play baseball too. <laughs> and be the is... greatest player that's ever lived. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a, uh, do you have a prized piece in your collection? Um, not, uh, maybe I don't like none of my stuff's really like worth money. I guess it's kind of just like memorabilia. Like I have like the paper from them winning the championship framed. And then I have like the bobbleheads that they give out during the season. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll, maybe like I have an autographed John Smoltz ball, which isn't like, too valuable but i got it when i was a kid and i like remember standing in line with my dad and like getting it autographed and stuff so it just means like a lot to me personally but mm -hmm. i guess that's where the value comes into play <laughs> like really what what is valuable you know it's only it's only worth uh a certain amount to the right person anyways i feel like that's important though like if you're gonna have a collection it should be stuff that is important to you and then yeah. if one day it has value it has value but to you it's always gonna have that that sentiment. Yeah, exactly. Most of my stuff is like, not. Nah, I don't have it because it's, I am hoping to resell it one day. I just have it because I love it. And it is like, we were talking about earlier, nostalgia. It just like yeah. makes me feel nostalgic when I look at it. So, and then if you have kids or, you know, if yep. not kids, nephews or something, you can pass that down to them. Yep, and, exactly. And they'll, you know, share the love that you have for the Braves. And then it kind of comes full circle. It becomes mm -hmm. like a, a family legacy of sorts. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Cause I still have, tomahawks and stuff from like 1992 that were like my brothers and my mm -hmm. dad got them before i was born and stuff like that so for yeah, sure and then when, once uh the braves get rid of the tomahawk uh, <laughs> it'll, be worth even culture, more. it'll be worth a whole shitload of money um, <laughs> right <laughs> i know that part of your memorabilia is also some pro wrestling stuff 
Yes. I don't know like anything, as I was saying earlier, I think the last match I watched was in 1997, <laughs> uh, some like old WCW bootleg tape. Um, what is the franchise that you prefer to follow and who is your favorite, I guess, wrestler of all time? Ooh, of all time. Okay. Um, I know that's kind of hard because it, it's, there's so many. I wouldn't even really say that I have a preference of like company. I think personally think that it's great. That there's so many companies right now, like even more than just AEW and WWE. Like if you really wanted to get into it, there's like new Japan, you know, impact ring of honor. And like, they all have great wrestlers. So just, it's a good time to be a fan. Cause there's so many options that mm-hmm. like, I don't feel like people should have to choose. Just watch everything if you want, you know? Um, and then like you were talking about earlier, the last match you watched, Sting is by far my all time favorite wrestler. So it's, I like freaked out when he came back in AEW, <laughs> like 65 years old. I was like, Amazing. no way. Yeah. It's incredible. Um, but yeah, most of my memorabilia for wrestling is, um, action figures and stuff because I collected them as a kid. And then my mom ended up selling them in a garage sale for like $5. And, <laughs> and then I got back into wrestling as an adult. So I was like, you know what? Like, like we were saying. I got a job. <laughs> I'm gonna buy some action figures. Buy them back. hundred <laughs> percent. I'm buying back my action figures, damn it. For like five times what they were sold for in the garage. <laughs> yeah. No, I gave up on trying to buy back like the older ones because it was just too expensive. So now I just get like current, but like only wrestlers that I like, you know, right. so I don't go too far down the rabbit hole of just buying everything. So uh this is kind of I, I don't this was not a planned question, but I know it, it, I just have to ask it because you're wearing a God's hate shirt. Um yeah. God's Hate might be, if not top five right now, like just oh, yeah. what I've been listening to, that mm-hmm. that 2021 drop. My so God. Good. How scared are you to see them live? Have you seen them live yet? Oh, I haven't. No. Um, our guitar player went to, uh, was it FYA? Yeah. And he actually ended up missing their set, I think, or he caught like the first couple songs or something, and then they had to leave. I don't know why, but... They're terrifying, <laughs> but yeah, they are definitely, they're probably my favorite band right now. It, at least in hardcore for sure. Yeah. That record is just insane. Like having Brody King, <clears throat> that's probably the extent of wrestling is like Sting and Bret Hart in 1997. And yeah. then Brody King is the vocalist. Of, <laughs> uh-huh. It's, of it's so hate. cool too. Cause you'll see so many comments on like the wrestling posts that like AEW posts and stuff from hardcore kids that like are probably just now getting into wrestling. And it's, it's so cool that he's become like a gateway almost for like both sides, like wrestling fans to get into hardcore and hardcore yep. fans to get into wrestling. Yeah. I, I, every God's hate, like on one nine seven, they've been playing a bunch of shows on the West coast. So one nine seven has been hitting up uh, a bunch of their stuff. And then the FYA stuff, all the, like most of the comments are like wrestling. It like, this is Brody King. Yeah, like, that's crazy. Yeah, a lot of people don't know. Like a lot of wrestling fans and stuff have no idea that he's in a band. And then it's just it adds like to the the terrifying aspect of when he's <laughs> yeah. shirtless with like a ski mask on, like a balaclava on, and it's yeah. like this is a seven foot tall vocalist like yeah, moshing on stage. Man. I love that. <laughs> it's it's that's what hardcore is about. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. I think we were watching a video of them the other day, and I was just like. Imagine getting punched by that man. Like how bad that would suck. <laughs> That's night night. Yeah, no thanks. Going from from God's hate, uh, what was your introduction to hardcore? Um, my first hardcore show ever, uh, my friend Ryan took me to, was Terror Foundation, Gravemaker. I want to say Trapped Under Ice played, but I can't really remember. Um, but yeah, that was my first show ever. And I remember some kid got like a knife pulled on him during terror. It was just like insane. I had been to like two shows before that, but I wouldn't say they were hardcore shows. You know, it was, I saw like August Burns red and stuff like that. So it was like, it was in the, the gist of like moshing and stuff like that. I got a taste, but hardcore was totally different. And from that show on, I was just hooked. Like, I was like, this is, this is where I need to be. Like, this is my scene kind of thing. So were you into heavy music before you kind of stepped into the, the hardcore like in specific scene? Um, I would say it was kind of like, uh, I would say maybe around the same time. Like I was into like heavy metal and stuff in high school. But when I say heavy metal, I mean like Black Sabbath and like okay. metal, you know, like yeah. up until like 10th grade. And then some of my friends in high school started getting me into like metalcore and like Lamb of God and August Burns Red and right. Azalea Dying and stuff like that. So that was like my introduction, I guess, to what, 
people would call screaming music yes. <laughs> essentially. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I just met people through going to those shows that were like, Hey, you know, you should come to this show and check out these bands. And I mean, it was probably, it was definitely within like a year of going to my first metal show and going to like my first real hardcore show that it was. So I would say it was like a seamless transition almost. Uh, that's crazy. Especially I was really jealous of Atlanta. Y'all got everything because it's the yeah. biggest city in Georgia. So we're stuck, in, in there, we're in stuck the, in Savannah, man. We like got to go to Jacksonville to see anything or. Yeah. The scene was popping there in like, Oh, from like Oh eight to like 2012. <laughs> it was just like crazy. There were so many bands coming through and so many bands popping up like new bands and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I remember, I think it was 2012 steadfast came with never see death. That was the show that we met at. And then I used to go to the seven venue when I was living in Birmingham and we would yep. go to like barbecue fest or if uh, other shows were happening, which RIP uh, seven venue, that was like, uh, that was my I, home away from home. <laughs> I would not be the person I am today without yep. the seven venue. Oh no, definitely not. Some of my best friends in life is like, I still am in contact with, you know, and hang out with every day. And it's because of the seven venue. Like my best friend lives in Orlando and is booking shows down there. And he used to book shows at the seven venue. I don't know if you shall be short. He runs oh, man, uh, yeah. 152 I, I, Productions, but... I remember 152, yeah. Yep. So he lives in Orlando now and is still booking shows under 152 in Orlando. Like, he brought it back. And it's That's just crazy. so crazy that, like... I met him in high school, actually, like ninth grade, and we weren't friends at all through high school. And then I started going to shows at the 7 venue, and he was the one booking the shows. <laughs> and then we became friends, been best friends ever since. I love local scenes because it does unite people. Like, I have the same stories of, of like seeing people at high school and then you go to a show and it's like, Oh yo, you go to, you know, my high school. And it's like, yeah, yeah it's like <laughs> now you eat lunch together. <laughs> yeah. I did. I'll never forget one time I was wearing an August Burns red shirt at lunch in like 11th grade. And this kid came up to me and was like, <laughs> he just looked at me and goes, Hmm, you seem more like a Toby Keith kind of guy. And just like walked <laughs> away. And then I saw him at the August Burns red show, like later that night at the masquerade, which was my first show ever. Actually, like my first metal show ever was take action tour, like 2007. That's so funny and he was like whoa <laughs> no way you actually listen to these bands and once again friends still to this day i love that that's like well i mean we had to wear uniforms in high school which sucked because i would always try to wear my like you know black skinny jeans or whatever uh yeah, but, try to put your own little spin yeah on you the put, uniform. A, put, a, put a flare <laughs> yeah. uh but so it was way harder to find you had to look for the hair oh yeah when, when you were in high school yeah the the straightened <laughs> But yeah, I, I think it's very funny that it's easy for people to judge, especially I've said like the metal community can be so elitist. Oh like, yeah. Where it's like, oh, you don't listen to this like weird black metal. Like you listen to black metal, not from Norway. Right. You don't really like black metal. It's yeah, like, you poser. <laughs> I don't care, bro. It's good music. Just let me listen. To yeah. I, I mean, I used to kind of like, I'm not going to lie and say I didn't care at a certain point when I was younger, not that I would like make fun of people for listening to whatever or, or anything, but now I just like, who cares if it's good music, it's good music. Like I'll listen to pop music. I'll listen to country music. It yeah. does not matter to me. If it sounds good, then it sounds good. <laughs> I'm trying to start a country band. So if you know anybody, yeah, I'll be in it. I love country. <laughs> me too, man. I've been Midland, trying for years and no one will ever commit. <laughs> Midland has been on my shit for a while. And then I'm kind of even going down like this weird country, Western, like new country western rabbit hole. Yeah, I love the new some of the newer stuff. Not like the pop country, but like no. the uh, like the culture wall. Like, yeah, I, I love he, culture wall. Yeah, and he's from Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. His voice so. is just like so unique. That the first time I heard it, I was like, "All right, <laughs> this guy's got me." Dispose is what you're the current band that you're playing in. You yes. guys just released Kiss of Death like last week, I think. Yeah. It's fucking heavy. I love Thank it. I've, I've been listening. I know that you posted about a single. I think late 2021 mm -hmm. uh, and I started tracking dispose. I like, hit the follow. Let's see what's going on. I love Cody. He always plays in heavy bands. It's going to be good music. Yeah. When kiss of death came out, I immediately like listened to the whole thing. I was like, God damn, I need some more <laughs> metal core in my life. Thank you. Uh, sounds great. So some of the production and the writing, is this a project that you kind of started and then, have been writing alongside or was it something y'all kind of stepped into as like a project? Um, well, actually our other guitar player, Wesley had already had about maybe two or three songs written, like sink below was the first song that 
they ever put out and he put that out as just him and the vocalist like an online thing Mm -hmm. i wasn't even a part of the band yet and i was like 2020 i think i could Mm -hmm. be wrong on that but i think it was 2020 um so then you know they kind of just didn't do anything and we just kept talking i was like hey man let's start a band like hounds isn't doing anything i want to play guitar in a band again like let's go and he's like well i already got all these songs and like a full ep (laughs) and stuff so if you just want to learn them which is kind of how it happened and so i just started going over to his house and learning all the songs and i think i helped uh, write like one or two for the ep and then we just put out the, the EP and we've wrote like a whole new album since then, pretty much, at least an album worth of songs. We're not going to put out a full thing, but, okay, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we have just like a bunch of new songs written since we've all joined because like I said, at first for like a year and a half, it was just him and the vocalist. And then we brought in yeah, um, a drummer mm-hmm. and we got our bass player brought in just because we needed to start playing live shows and stuff. So we've only played like a handful of shows since being a band. Yeah, I was so, going to ask. It's uh, I know it's been difficult because starting a band in 2020, it was not the highlight of a year for no. live music. It seems like a lot of projects, even here in Montreal, there's been two or three bands mm-hmm. kind of pop up that their videos, like their first video was two members just like, yeah. you know, fucking off. And then now they're a full band playing live shows. So I find that this era of uh, starting bands and writing music is kind of different than what we grew up with. Where yeah, you start a band, jam you play for shows. Like six yeah. months in the garage and write yeah. songs like that. Yeah, now you put out a whole EP with two people, and then it's like, well, got to play shows, got to find yep. musicians. It's almost easier that way too, like to just write what you want to write, and then just find people that are willing to play it. For I mean, that depends, I guess, because writing with some people is very easy. Like I've written in bands before, and like we can write a full EP in a day in mm-hmm. the garage, and it's not, it's no problem, you know. But then there's sometimes when you're like please stop playing your instrument. I can't think, <laughs> you know, like, please, like the drum, like drummers, especially no offense. Drummers oh, just like, please stop hitting things. <laughs> like, I can't hear myself. Think. You're the loudest thing in the room and you will not stop hitting the drums. Yeah. But I'm not going to lie. I get that a lot at practice because I'll just be over there like riffing random riffs and stuff. And Wesley will be like, shut up. Like we're trying to have a conversation. <laughs> conversation. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I just can't help it. How do you expect yeah. me to hold my guitar and not play it? Like my tone is so good here. Have you heard this? And then you just start playing again. Smoke on Fair the enough. water. Just <laughs> Yeah, definitely. For production wise, are you guys recording, doing like the DIY style or have y'all been going to a studio, working with a producer? Um, for the most part, we do everything in house. Like we, we write fully at Wesley's house, like demo everything. He does drum, like programs drums and all that, you know, and then our drummer will learn it and like put his own kind of spin on it and stuff. And then we just go to our homie's house in um, Noonan, Georgia. He has like, it's not like a, I mean, he has a studio for sure, but it's not like, that's not his job, you know, like he's not a producer kind of thing. And he tracked us like for free. I mean, he hooked it up um, just like a friendly, like we were just hanging out, you know, kind of thing. We went in there and recorded live drums and everything. And um, then we just sent it off to Patrick Snyder, who, has done like hollower i don't know if you know who that is um i think he did uh vatican yep um and then he did the first hounds release and stuff like that and um so we just sent it off to him for mixing and mastering but the whole recording process and writing and everything is completely like diy in-house for sure that's awesome yeah i love when bands keep that that diy like we just want to get it done and let's get it yeah. done or we only have like <laughs> this little amount of money to spend so let's just go and (laughs) yeah yeah well that was our thing too is like we don't want to sink like thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars into recording a record right now so let's try to do as much as we can on our own right you know and then we'll start paying for things as we have to but i'm happy to say for the most part we do pretty much everything diy in this band that's great i'm always on board with uh uh people who just want to get that shit done it's more stressful but it's definitely more rewarding in the long run it feels like you have more skin in it when you do it that way though. Mm-hmm. Like I know like you can spend, you know, $700 to get an EP or something done. Yeah. But you kind of just spend the money and then you don't really have to worry about it. But when you do right. it yourself, it's like stress. And then you're like, is this going to work? Like, yeah. Is it good enough? Like, are these yeah, it tracks- sounds good to me, but does it sound good to everyone else? Like, and then you don't know until you send it to the mixing guy or if you even try yeah. to mix it yourself it's like well we're gonna have to retract all the drum mm-hmm. parts for this one song oh shit yeah thankfully we had a 
uh, our, like I said, our friend helping us out because none of us actually know how to record. Like mm-hmm. we know how to like demo stuff, and but it would not be anywhere good enough to put it out for like people to hear it. <laughs> well, I, the knowing that you guys recorded and tracked yourselves on the EP, it it really does sound super good. It doesn't sound like it. Like I was fully expecting you to be like, we worked with this producer. Oh, so yeah. it <laughs> does you. sound great. It. Um, Shout out, uh, Brandon Pigeon and Patrick Snyder for for twenty twenty two. What, what kind of plans do you guys have? Uh, well, right now, we're st- me and Wesley have just been riding our asses off pretty much. Um, we're, tr- we're trying to probably put out another EP. We're looking for a band to do a split with if we can. Um, mm. So we've been kind of just like asking around bands that we're friends with and bands that we just really like kind of thing at first. Try to put something together, put some runs together and stuff. But other than that, we're just booking like one-off shows. We have a show with Madball in March. Um other than I think we might have a show in June. We're playing with, uh, what is it? Uh, Strangle You, I think. I could be completely wrong about this. I should have had this in front of me. But yeah, we just, I mean, pretty much like a show a month if we can. Little weekenders right. here and there, like the regional surrounding states and stuff. Because, you know, we all work full time, have families. And Wesley's a damn firefighter and has yeah. a kid. So <laughs> it's like we have to really be careful and schedule around his work. Right. Yeah. Firefighters are important. But yeah, we're just trying to keep writing and playing as much as we can. That's the that's really what we want to do is just keep putting out music and playing shows. We're just trying to have a good time at this point in our lives, really. Not trying to be big and rich and famous or anything, you know? Right. Yeah, I fully understand that. Um, well, that's awesome. I know that usually I would say, like, hope to see you guys in Montreal soon. But... Yeah, yeah, man, if you can book it, we'll come. I'm we'll trying make to it figure that shit out. It's hard. It's like <laughs> you book uh, it and get us a gear to borrow. We will fly to Montreal. And bro, fly I, the have, show. I have. I swear to God, I have enough gear for y'all. Um, but yeah, I, it's like finding a venue is the hard part. But yeah. I would love that. Yeah, it'd be a fun time for sure. Yeah, we've um, already been talking about doing stuff like that. Just like because uh, we're trying to record our next EP with um, Taylor Young, the the guy from uh, Twitching Tongues and God's mm-hmm. Hate. He records like God's Hate and uh, Momentum and all those kind of bands. And Van Nuys, right? Like, uh, yeah. So we were like, want to fly out there and try to record a couple songs for the split with him if we can. Just his quality it, uh, is just like untouchable. Like, there's no better producer in hardcore right now than him. It sounds in my like opinion. it's the greatest combination of produced, but to the point where it doesn't sound like. Right. Cause he does like all live recordings. Yeah. So it just sounds super raw, but it's like the clearest, like crispiest raw recordings I've <laughs> ever heard. And yeah, his guitar comes just nuts. Yeah. So that's like me and Wesley's like dream. It's like, all right, well, let's save up money and then fly to California and record these songs just for fun because it'll be awesome. Yeah. You can't check a bag. It's too expensive. You got to like carry <laughs> your guitar, like all your clothes are in your guitar case with your guitar. It's not a terrible idea, honestly. Um, but we're, yeah, we were already talking like, we need to borrow gear. We got to find someone out there that'll let us use guitars and stuff, but Um, we'll figure it out. Yeah. I'm trying to think of, I don't really have solid connections in California yet, but (laughs) I'm I'm getting there. (laughs) It's a dream right now. Yeah. Well, Cody, I have really enjoyed catching up with you. Uh, I'm super stoked on the disposed of, I'm definitely going to keep tracking everybody listening. Make sure to go check out kiss of death. Uh, it's probably one of my top of 2022 already. Um, but yeah, it's a banger. It's Thank a, you, man. I appreciate it a lot. It's a banger. Uh, I have one question for you before we go. Yes, sir. What is your favorite city for beans and breakdowns? Well, I feel like you expected this, but I'm going to have to say Atlanta. It's just un, like untouchable growing up with bands like foundation and stuff. Like we just had it all. And we yeah. still have, like there's still so many good bands coming out and playing shows that to me, it's just untouchable. I agree. It's it's Atlanta for me growing up, like seven venue. I I a hundred percent understand yeah. the masquerade days, like when mm. it was next to the murder Kroger. Oh yeah, the OG masquerade with the floor caving in when yeah. you were up there, you could like literally see the floor bouncing. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Played my first show there and went to my first show there. So yeah, <laughs> Atlanta's the Atlanta's the move. If you're from Georgia, if you have any uh Absolutely. Yeah. So well, awesome, man. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on, hanging out with me super early on a Saturday. Uh, but I wish you guys, you and Dispose, all the best. And you personally, man, uh, uh, I hope you have a great a great 2022. Thanks, man. It was great catching up. I really appreciate you having me on. Yeah, of course. Uh, take care. Yeah, you too. Thanks. 
Thanks for listening to this episode of Beans and Breakdowns. I want to say a huge thanks to Cody for hanging out with me early on a Saturday morning. Uh, I'm so excited to see what comes out uh, with Dispose Music. And uh, definitely be sure to check them out on social media. Check out Kiss of Death, available on all listening platforms. Uh, Keep an eye out for any shows that they might have coming up in the future. If you've enjoyed the podcast, please subscribe and leave a review. You can find out more about the podcast by following us on Instagram at Beans and Breakdowns and on the web at beansandbreakdowns.com. Until next week, be sure to stay caffeinated and wake the fuck up. (laughs) 